Greetings, Bucknutters. This is the Bucknuts Morning Five. I'm Dan Rubin coming to you this Tuesday morning from the Polar Vortex, known as the Gem City, Dayton, Ohio. I'm joined by the lovely and talented Alex Gleitman in our Manhattan office. And Alex, as we hit the main topics of the day, trying to set the table for our, our buck nutters here. There's a chill in the air with uh, one Jamarco Jones as well. We've all heard about his uh, flirtation with Michigan State. Kind of bring us up to speed on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right now the plan is for Jamarco Jones to visit Michigan State this weekend. Obviously, that's not going to make Ohio State happy. The problem with that is Urban Meyer's already used his in-home visit, meaning he can't go back and have an off-campus uh, contact with Jones during the same period. So they're going to have to send a bevy of uh, Ohio State assistant coaches out there to Chicago to try to prevent that visit. Um, but, you know, right now you know, Michigan State has a long-standing relationship with Jamarco. So, uh, you know, that's the current situation. I'll have a much more in-depth piece on that today, a long analysis of the whole situation, what it means, what Ohio State can do, the pros and the cons. So be sure to look out for that on Bucknuts on the front page today. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Bill Kerwick has also commented on this a, a little bit. And this is the kind of story that will be all over our message boards all day. So definitely want to check that out. Uh, the Arctic chill uh, in the eastern seaboard that did not, uh, or in, uh, all across the country for that matter, has not kept the Ohio State staff from recruiting. Where have the guys been recently and uh, who, who are they focused on? Yeah, we actually have a thread on the front row right now uh, to follow the coaches on the road for this week. But Urban Meyer was actually up in Detroit yesterday. He was visiting uh, Damon Webb and the Cast Tech crew, but his kind of bigger targets uh, were Malik McDowell, the defensive lineman from Southfield. He actually, Urban, secured a visit from Malik this weekend. He'll be taking an official. He also stopped in on a potential backup for Jamarco Jones, the offensive tackle. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, but his last name is Okorafor. Um, he will uh, potentially visit with Malik this weekend. Chris Ash was down in North Carolina visiting on a couple of 2015 prospects. He handed out some offers yesterday. Zach Smith did the same thing down in South Florida. It looks like that's going to be his territory moving forward. And then on top of that, Ed Warner was in New Jersey, actually stopped in on Quentin Nelson, uh, who won't be flipping from Notre Dame, but also offered 2016 wide receiver Chris or uh, Cameron Chambers uh, he's actually from Philly but goes to school in southern Jersey. So those four coaches were out on the road, and you can expect a lot more uh, coming this week. We'll definitely keep you uh, up to speed on that on the front row and that thread. Yeah, I'm going to try and take a shot at that offensive lineman's name. Chikwoma Okorafor, who, that works. A, uh, throughout, who is an offensive lineman, actually attends Southfield with McDowell. He's from that hometown. This is clearly a backup plan. Um, I know a little bit about him uh, from our soldiers at Michigan State because they were they were seriously considering him. I don't think people should freak out as much that he's a Western Michigan commitment. I saw that and was concerned. He does have some excellent offers, um, which is kind of bizarre, and that he's got an offer from Florida and still committed to um, Western Michigan. I think West he's got Oklahoma, it. too. He, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It, it doesn't add up. So it's not like they're going after a prospect that's a complete you know, plan D here. If you want to get the full updated story on a quarter four, Bill Kerlick does a great job, has many sources in Michigan. Um, it's prominently featured in what I am hearing story today. Um, you're going to need a premium membership for that. You're, uh, this is a good time to join. You've got a free trial for a week coming up, and um, with signing day bearing down on you, that's definitely something you want to get handled. All right, last question. Very popular thread on the site right now, started by uh, Jay Book. Um, concern everywhere. Who calls the defense next year for the Ohio State Buckeyes? Uh, I'll leave it as simple as this, Chris Ash. He didn't, uh, he didn't come to Columbus to play second fiddle, take a demotion, and hope to get a head coaching job one day. It will be Chris Ash. I know what is being said in the media. Uh, a little hint for everyone out there. Don't believe everything athletes and coaches say to the media because, as Dan told me before the show, 90% of it isn't true, and, and I have to agree with that. Ninety percent, and I was it was that being slightly hyperbolic, possibly. I just there's no way to really juxtapose something that's said in the media with something behind closed doors. I know that frustrates people in the front row at times, and gives it kind of a and they don't like the inside source vibe. But that's really the only way to get the truth in a lot of cases. Um, we'll have plenty on that, by the way, today in the boarding house, including an item on Luke Fickle uh, from an NFL scout. 
talking about the defense he saw last year for Ohio State and kind of breaking it down. Alex, I appreciate you joining us. Everybody check back with us on the front row all day. We'll be around, and uh, thanks for joining us for today. Bucking up in Morning 5.